Hi everybody, Professor Tomney here with another organic chemistry lecture for the Chem Complete series, and we are finally going to wrap up and finish alcohols this time. So it's been quite a number of lessons since we started the alcohol chapter. We're going to look at the complementary process to reduction today, which is oxidation. So if you remember, reduction dealt with taking carbonyl groups and bringing them down to alcohols. We are going to observe the opposite when we do oxidation. So to keep in mind, uh, when we were talking about, in terms of organic chemistry, carbons that increase their hydrogen bonds and decrease the number of carbon-oxygen bonds are said to be reduced. And then if we decrease the number of carbon-hydrogen bonds and we increase the number of carbon-oxygen bonds, we're talking about oxidation. And if you forget this or for some reason this doesn't make sense to you, go back and look at the lesson we did on reduction so that you can understand uh, some of the basic electronics behind oxidation reduction techniques. So let's start. We're going to take a look at primary alcohols, secondary alcohols, and tertiary alcohols and the oxidation process behind each of them. So to start, I'm going to work with a primary alcohol, which would be ROH, where R, uh, we're making sure this OH is attached to a primary position on the R group. And the, there are really two options that you can take here. The first is that you can use a weak oxidation, and the second is that you can do a strong oxidation. Now, if you remember, when we did reduction, we had strong and weak reagents as well. So the NaBH4 was a weak reduction reagent, and the lithium aluminum hydride was a strong reducing agent. So we have the same sort of premise here. Uh, PCC is a weak oxidizer, and any form of a chromic with a lot of oxygen, so we have uh, chromium trioxide, you can sometimes see Na2, Cr2, O7. You can also use KMnO4 sometimes. I know students are a little more familiar with that, but usually you're going to see the CrO3. Okay, a primary alcohol is going to oxidize using PCC to the corresponding aldehyde. And so I end up with the aldehyde. Now, if I use a strong oxidizing agent, I'm going to oxidize the aldehyde even further. So you always stop off at an aldehyde, but you can create a carboxylic acid. Note that this has a higher level of oxidation because I have one, two, three carbon oxygen bonds, whereas here I only have one, two carbon oxygen bonds. So the CrO3 or the Na2Cr207, any of these are going to be considered strong oxidizers. Now, let's give a little more detail, and again, we're going to come back to all of these. Let's take a look at the primary alcohols in a little more detail. So a good example is ethanol, regular old drinking alcohol, and this is the form for ethanol. So if I would like to use PCC, and by the way, PCC, the actual name for PCC is pyridinium chlorochromate, and the structure of it, uh, which is rather complex, but I'll draw it over here, is the P part, the pyridium part, comes from pyridine. And so you're going to have, we've discussed this in a couple of the other synthesis lectures, you're going to get this aromatic nitrogen compound. It's going to have a plus and, oops, I shouldn't have drawn those lone pair on there, excuse me the out of habit it's got a plus because it's attached to a hydrogen here okay now you also are going to couple this with cro3 cl minus we're really in any of the lectures that i'm going to be showing you guys i'm going to refer to it as pcc so this is really the only time i'm going to bring this up or you're going to see this reagent but this whole entire set right here is pcc okay now normally this is also run with uh, dichloromethane or methylene chloride, whichever you want to call this, as a solvent. 
what happens is you got to be careful not to add in any extra carbon. So the CH2 that contains the OH becomes the C that now hosts the aldehyde. Let's try to make that oxygen a little bigger there. Okay. So if you take a look at this, always count your carbons. I have one carbon here. I have two carbons. So I have one carbon here. I have two carbons. I should never end up with more carbons when I'm doing this oxidation process. I should have the same number. Not to say you can't get more carbons with other reactions, such as a Grignard, but this is not one of those cases. You should keep all of your carbons from the start to the finish. So if I wanted to do strong oxidizing, I would use, the, the one I'm going to tend to use is CRO3. Again, your instructor may use something else if you are um, following along in your class. Let's erase a little bit of that there. Okay, CRO3. And these reagents have a strong acid included with them. You need that acidic workup in order to properly complete this. And what we end up with when we go through this oxidation is the carboxylic acid and i will at the end of this uh video lecture i will recap all the different styles we have so that's oxidation for a primary alcohol so what about a secondary alcohol well a secondary alcohol would look something like this ch3 we're going to use one of the simplest examples just so you can follow along right now oh right and this is ch ch3 that's about as simple as you get for a secondary alcohol. So if I took 2-propanol here and I decided to subject it to PCC or to any of the strong oxidizers, it doesn't matter which I do, it's going to come out to give me a ketone. So that middle alcohol becomes a ketone. Notice that basically anywhere the alcohol is, is becoming a C double bond O group, right? And so in this case, I'm not going to have carboxylic acids. Uh, despite what you might think, we're not going to get esters here with an extra oxygen. Strong or weak, it doesn't matter. A secondary alcohol will always yield a ketone anytime you go through that oxidation process. Always. Secondary alcohols always go to ketones. So what about tertiary alcohols? Well, if I take a tertiary alcohol, for instance, t-butanol, right? That's a simple tertiary alcohol. Here's my tertiary alcohol. If I would like to oxidize this, if I use PCC or CrO3 and H3O+, can you guess what's going to happen? The truth is there's no reaction. And the reason that there's going to be no reaction here, and some students will say ketone at first, is because note that I have to end up with the same number of carbons. And the carbon that contains the alcohol is going to be the one that becomes the carbonyl group. Well, if I draw the following, I keep my t-butyl groups, right? And then I draw this. There's a major problem with that. Carbon has, and you should know this by this point, five bonds and that is a huge mistake you cannot do that in organic chemistry you will get torn apart by your instructor myself included if I am your instructor uh, you will get torn apart for attempting to draw carbon with more than four bonds so this is forbidden we do not have tertiary alcohol oxidations there's no such thing all right so to recap what we've got going on here if I have a primary alcohol I can utilize PCC and I will get the corresponding aldehyde. I can use chromic acid along with H3O+. Again, you could use some other oxidizing agents. And take note that when I write Na2Cr2O7, CrO3, KMnO4, every time I have the O, there's a, a, quite a number of O's, right? And so when we have the O's there, you're going to find that these are oxidizing agents. When you have a lot of H's, NaBH4, okay, LiAlH4, which is lithium aluminum hydride, those are reducing agents when I have lots of hydrogens available. 
So anyway, getting back to this, we've got a carboxylic acid derivative of the original alcohol. Secondaries, whenever I have a secondary alcohol, I can use either or. So I can use my weak or I can use my strong, CrO3, H3O+. And I will get ketones, corresponding ketone. And tertiaries are non-existent because I cannot have a carbon with five bonds. That's not allowed. And so this is a forbidden reaction. We cannot do tertiary oxidations of alcohols. All right, so hopefully you found this helpful. Um, I will probably post at some point a video with some practice for alcohol problems so that you guys can check yourselves. Uh, other than that, that really covers what I wanted to discuss as far as alcohols go. So the next chapter or lesson that you should focus on if you're following along with this online series is going to be the chapter on ethers and epoxides. And I will start getting that loaded up as soon as possible. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I will get back to you. As always, please remember to like the video if it was helpful, and you can subscribe for the latest updates. And I will see you guys for the next video where we will get started on our chapter for ethers and epoxides. So until then, this is Professor Tomney, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day.